Good morning, YouTube. I hope your week's off to a great start. I don't know about you, but this week is kicking my butt. I need a midweek photography fix. This week, we're gonna be talking about blend ifs. Now, this is not a new feature in Photoshop, but it's new to me. And it's one of those things where once I learned it, I was so excited about it, but also furious that it's taken me this long to learn it and implement it in my post-processing routine. I now use blend ifs on every single photo that I edit. It is extremely versatile and it gives you great results and much more manageable files than something like a luminosity mask. But that's enough jibber jabber. Let's hop over to Photoshop and I'm gonna show you what it's all about. Okay, here we have an image from the Dry Tortugas, and I like this image, but I felt like the sky just doesn't quite pop enough. I feel like there's a ton of interest here on the left side with the fort, but the right side in the sky, it just felt a little bit flat to me, and especially on these reflections in the water. Now this would be a tough image to do local adjustments masking in Lightroom. I'd probably have to do some sort of radial filter or a linear gradient filter, but with blend ifs, we have a much easier option. I'm just gonna simply apply a brightness contrast layer. And then I'm gonna switch to soft light. And you can see that we've added a ton of interesting contrast in the sky, but at the expense of our shadows, which look like absolute garbage. So what we're gonna do to fix this is we're gonna double click to the far right of our layer. And that's gonna bring up our layer style. We're gonna look at the blend if section and we wanna be in the gray color space. And the reason for this is that we're looking at luminance and not color. We're gonna look at the underlying layer and we're going to start sliding the dark slider away and you're gonna see in the image that it's gonna stop impacting those darkest areas. So here's before. And as we start sliding to the right, you'll notice that we're no longer impacting the fort at all. And now we're just starting to impact the brighter areas in the sky. And this is about where I want to be. But you're gonna see that the, the blend is not quite natural. It looks very chunky and uneven. So what we're gonna do is feather it. And to do that, we're gonna hold Alt and we're gonna click the far right end of that arrow and we're gonna start dragging towards the other side until it start looking natural right about there. And now we click OK and here's our before and here's our after and you can see we've just added a ton of contrast and interest in the sky but we're not impacting the fort or any of these shadows whatsoever now this brightness contrast layer has caused us to blow out our highlights and we could fix this by backing off the highlights in our blend if panel but I want to take this opportunity to show you another thing I really like to use blend ifs for and that's for fixing overblown highlights so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go into our layer selection and we're going to select a solid color. We're gonna hide that layer so that we can see what we're doing. And then we're just gonna double click on the color swatch. And then when it brings up our color picker, we're just gonna select an area just outside of those blown highlights. I want a nice pale yellow. I'm gonna go with this color here. We're gonna select okay. And now when we view our layer, we're gonna see that nice pale yellow. Double click on the far right end of our layer again, and we're gonna do the same exercise. We're gonna start dragging this in, but we're gonna to need to drag it all the way towards the right so that we're just impacting those brightest highlights. Now this already looks much better, but we're gonna go ahead and feather it from here just to give it a much smoother and more natural look. And we select okay, and I still feel like it looks a little bit chunky, so I'm just gonna back off the opacity a tiny bit. That looks much better. So here's the before, and you have these bright white highlights, and here's the after, and we filled it with a nice pale yellow. Okay, so here's the before, and here's the after. And it's subtle, but it just gives a ton more interest to the sky without compromising our shadows on the fort. I'm getting the sense that you're not sold yet. Are you not entertained? So let's do one more. This image here was taken in Iceland and I was drawn in to the beautiful lush greens on these peaks. And of course the rolling clouds and the waterfall didn't hurt, but it was the greens of the scene that really drew me in and that I wanted to capture. And I was disappointed with how flat this scene looked when I got it back on the computer. But with blend ifs, I think we could fix this. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna apply a hue saturation layer just to try and really bring out those greens. So I'll go here to my layers hue saturation and I'm going to bring the saturation up a bit 
and then I'm gonna bring that lightness down and maybe a little bit more on the saturation and now our greens have a little bit more pop but now the rest of our scene is just looking a little bit too dark so we're going to double click on the far right side and this time we're gonna to switch to greens because we only want to be impacting the greens and we want to be impacting the mid-tones so I'm gonna bring my slider in from the left and you can see that it's leaving the shadows and I'm gonna bring it in until I start to see the greens no longer impacted. So right about here. Now I'm gonna do the same on my brights. I don't wanna impact the brights. And as I bring it in, you can see that we're leaving those clouds alone. And I'm gonna keep dragging it until I see my greens start to change. Whoops, just right about there. Now I'm gonna feather on the highlights and the shadows. Okay, and now here is the before and the after. And you can see I'm really only impacting the greens and giving them just a little bit more punch. This is much simpler than using a luminosity mask. And on top of that, we've added almost no data to the file, so the file stays the same size. Whereas the luminosity masks adds quite a bit of size to our files. The final thing that I would want to do on this image is just decrease this bright spot here. So one more layer mask. Just going to select a brightness contrast and I'm going to leave it as normal. And I'm going to decrease the brightness and open up the blend if panel. And we're going to go all the way to the right until we're just impacting that brightest area. And feather this down. All right, perfect. And you can see here, we just darkened down those brightest areas in the sky, so they're no longer a distraction. And here we go, just in a minute and a half of editing, we went from this to this. And it is those subtle changes that really make or break a photo. All right, well, we ran a little bit long on this video, but I felt like this is one of those things you need to see multiple examples, and we really just scratched the surface. You could use this for sharpening, denoise, any type of layer mask that you're doing, this is an awesome tool. And I use it, like I said, at least once or twice on every single image that I process now. That's going to do it for us this week. Make sure you come back Sunday. We'll be back in Rocky Mountain National Park photographing Odessa Lake. If you like this video and you want to see more photography content, make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing to this channel. Otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic week. I'll see you this weekend. Get out there, make some images. Mm -hmm.